this is Lebo. Hey, today we've got World Cup Soccer from Valley in 1994. This is a game for Pinball and Garage in Hamilton, Ohio. If you haven't been there, you gotta go. It's really a great place. Um, it's just a little bit north of Cincinnati. They've got a number of just fantastic games and they're continuing to grow. This one's going there. So, make a trip. You'll get to play this game and I'm gonna go over everything that we've done with this and uh, what to expect. Okay, starting out with the cabinet, we just cleaned everything up. The decals were in, in fine shape, really. The only thing is that uh, some of the yellows on the side have faded a little bit, but really it's not bad enough to where we needed to redo a, a whole decal job. So it was decided to just leave that alone. Uh, as you'll notice, the side rails here and uh, the lock bar uh, were taken off and uh, powder coated black. Normally they're just the you know, the unfinished metal, uh, the silver. Uh, but those were those were powder coated black. The legs were also powder coated black. Um, the the front brackets that were behind the legs that actually hold them in the threaded brackets were in, in really rough shape. Uh, one side had uh, one that was stripped out really bad, another that uh, looked like it was poorly cross threaded. So they're really strong plates in there now. Uh, so that's nice and, and strong. The um, the coin door that you'll notice here. This coin door is one that is, um, it's not really used in the U.S. from what I understand. This, this machine started out in its life being sent overseas and uh, was operated on 220 volts. It was converted back to 110 when it came back to the U.S. And I uh, don't know a whole lot of other details to that other than uh, when it came back, it, it was operational and it was being used, but it still had this, um, I like to call it kind of a funky coin door because it's not one that I'm used to and it's got a different coin mix. So we're still going to actually get that swapped out as soon as it gets to the arcade. Uh, but for the most part, that's about it on the cabinet. Uh, of course, the shooter rod was, you know, all cleaned up and, uh, you know, re-sleeved, uh, new springs. Uh, so it, that's that's all working great okay moving to the back box uh it's it's the original translite but uh we did a few little tricks to it do little changes take this off so you can see the leds that were added uh it's mostly a natural cool white throughout uh, a few greens at the bottom uh ambers here around the the world cup logo um but I also added in uh, a few extra sockets that weren't there at all, just to put some extra sparkle behind some of the graphics that were in the game. Let me open this up and you can take a look. So you'll see that there was a socket here, here, and here, and I've actually put blinking lights behind them, just uh, behind the explosions that are in the, in the screen. It's just little things to try to make it, make it look a little cooler. Uh, as far as the work that was done inside, most everything was working okay. However, there were a few things done. Uh, one thing I will notice that you will already notice is that this does have a color DMD. Uh, this LCD display was already there before it started on it, so I really didn't have to do anything with that other than uh, kind of open it up and clean uh, the area around it. Um, as far as the work that was done here, as far as the capacitors are concerned here, all of them were replaced. Uh, the game was doing a, a couple resets at some weird times, and so, it was uh, it was not clear that the capacitors had ever been replaced, so they've all been been uh, replaced. I put new ones in and put a note with the date uh, to just to give it a record. Um, connectors. So for the GI lights, and I'll go over everything in the play field in a moment. But for the GI lights, there were I think three strings of lights that were not working at all or just intermittently working. And as it turns out, as uh, usually happens that the connectors uh, for the GI were pretty fried. They were brown and crispy and just were not making good contact. So I rebuilt those connectors, but you may be thinking, hey, where are they? They're not here. Well, um, one thing that was also added to this game to enhance the performance of all of the LEDs, take out the flicker and just, just make it a, a smoother, better experience is that there was the, the OCD LED uh, playfield board uh, and the GI board uh, were both added. So uh, the connectors here are actually the ones that were rebuilt. They came off of this, they go into this 
uh, little socket container and is tied in uh, to the, the new GI circuit, new cables uh, that come along with that too. And for the most part, unless I'm forgetting something, that is uh, all there is to look at in the back box. One thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about the cabinet and really the back box too, uh, it had to do with part of the performance of the game. There was a bug, there was a problem that it was having that any time that you would hit the, the right flipper, when the ball was spinning, the right flipper was just, just terribly weak. And in fact, when the game came to me, the, the motor for the ball was just totally disconnected just to prevent the weakness that would occur uh, with the right flipper. As it turned out, um, we thought that it was going to be maybe something to do with the power or the Fliptronics board, maybe, or something to do with the power driver board, maybe. Uh, but based on some tips just through, uh, through pin side, I was uh, pointed towards the actual opto boards that are behind the flippers themselves. Yeah, they're all excited about it. So anyways, uh, put a new opto board in and uh, reconnected the motor for the, the uh, soccer, bo soccer ball and everything worked fine. So both the boards on both sides uh, were replaced. They were not too terribly expensive. So it was, it was worth doing it just to prevent uh, future problems. Okay, so now let's, let's get to talking about the real fun part about this. The, most of the work that was done in this game really was concentrated all where it really matters, and that's all in the play field. When the game came to me, there were a number of broken pieces. Uh, the plastic around the back of the ramp here was punched out, just had duct tape kind of holding it together. Uh, a lot of cracked pieces. There was even just some, some missing parts even. Um, to start out, the, the play field was taken out and put on a rotisserie to where everything was removed. Uh, everything was cleaned. There was actually really no wear to this play field. This is one of the, um, is this one of the diamond plate play fields or maybe confusing it with another one? Uh, I think it am. Anyway, it, it, the play field really is, is great. Uh, there's just, there's no, no wear into it. It was just really filthy. So after cleaning it all down, uh, it was just trying to find uh, any other things that were broken that needed to be uh, dealt with and, and just addressed as I put it back together. When I did start to put things back together, there was a few little mods that I started to do along the way. But let me just kind of give you an overview of it all. Of course, you can tell there's LEDs everywhere and I've generally went with, with, with the natural uh, cool light in most places. There are some spots where I put in um, Comets, uh, OpMax, uh, they're, they're purple bulbs in a couple little places. Just that it gives sort of a, a, a neat reflection against certain colors, and I think it really brings it out nicely in this game. Uh, the pop bumpers is the first time I've used them, but the, the actual ring lights, um, I think it just looked right for this game. The thing about it too is that it offers a lot of brightness underneath the pop bumper area. And that was one of the issues that I really noticed with this game is that it just felt like it had a lot of dark spots. As I was putting it all back together, uh, that really became apparent. Uh, but yeah, all, all new ramps, all new plastics, all new posts, uh, all, of the, all of the bands are the Titan silicon bands instead of rubber, so they'll, they should last really forever. Uh, we've got cliffies everywhere uh, on all the, um, uh, the saucers, there, there's cliffies there. Going into this TV final draw uh, spot, there's a cliffy there going into the goal. Got one there as well. Uh, I've put them here down at the uh, bottom where the, where the ball comes in the end lanes. That There were some wear spots that was down into the wood, and that has been addressed and just totally covered up. As I was putting them back together, again, I mentioned I've added a few extra lights, and I just want to kind of point out what the, where all those are. So starting down at the trough, there's of course a light just to light up that area. It's just a, um, just a, again, natural cool light. Added a small little strip over here uh, on the left hand side. It was just, just dark. Um, put two spotlights to light up the, the general center section of it. The little upper play field over here where the ball locks. I noticed every time that the ball would get locked, you'd almost kind of forget where it was. So when I had it out, I added in a socket that goes underneath and does a right-hand turn, and I've got a wedge bulb uh, with, with a, a dual flex lamp 
uh, that's coming out. Just so it, it's nice to light up that whole whole area. Behind this uh, this uh, sign that's over on the on the left hand side, of, just above the ramp, I've got one uh, spotlight that's sort of hidden behind it, and it's shining towards a soccer ball down here below, just to try to light light up that area. There is uh, another socket here that's shining up on the goalie, and the reason I put him there is at a certain point in the game, uh, all the lights will dim down when you're trying to make a shot into the goal. All the lights go down except for, I think, one strand of the GI. So that's tied into that one strand. So that one stays lit to try to help light up that, that goalie so you can really focus on it. Um, on the left-hand side, the, the lower ramp area, or uh, I guess just really, yeah, underneath underneath this, I'm sorry, yeah, underneath actually this ramp here. Um, I actually added in a strip of LEDs, uh, just to, again, lightening up a really dark area. The back corner underneath the plastics, there's a couple extra lamps to light up the area. So in the back wall, there's a, a couple other uh, lighting effects that I did. So I added in strips, uh, just to the, actually it's the part of the cabinet that is up high here that is shining down and it's wired in uh, really into the snake that runs into all the wiring of the game um, from coming down from the head so that you can still get the, the play filled out easily without having that being an issue. Uh, but anyways, there's uh, lights here that are shining back uh, to try to illuminate that back wall where where the logos are that look like actual lights. So it it has sort of a neat effect. The, the light spots here that were the original design um, I kind of had an issue with them a little bit because it felt like it was always shining a, a bulb straight in my face and I wanted to light something up to where you could see it and it looked cool. So I ended up taking uh, uh, the dual flex bulbs and pointing them back backwards and pointing them to the side so you could actually see what's there. And I had a, a, an idea that was mentioned to me. I can't take credit for it because uh, it was just a good friend of mine that said, hey, you know what would be a cool idea? Why don't you just... Uh, take those bulbs out and spray paint the back of it black. I thought that was a pretty good idea um, because before you just see all the white plastic and the wiring and, and uh, the little tiny circuitry, you know, it's not a big deal, but it's just those little things that try to kind of help clean it up a little. Uh, so that was done. Uh, the LEDs that are down here behind the goal, I put in flex bulbs there too, just to, uh, again, it's, so I wanted to light it up nice but without it being just in your face. So another thing you might notice is uh, the actual wire form. This uh, habit trail and the actual skill shot were powder coated purple. Now that I got the, the lights out and it's just the game lights on, you're not seeing it so much here in the camera too well. But it was just one thing to try to just make it look a little unique. And uh, I think it actually turned out cool. Now I'll be the first to admit I am just not a pinball pro. I enjoy playing and I've gotten better, but I still always got room for improvement. That said, let me try to go over a few things uh, that this game does, just some stuff to, to watch for uh, that I've learned. And there's still a lot more, I won't go over it all. Uh, but I wanted to at least mention a few things so that if you get to go play this game or you're playing it somewhere else, um, you'll have an idea of maybe a couple things to go try when you walk up to a game you're not familiar with. Uh, so anyways, when you first start the game, you you may notice that when you first launch the ball, it goes into this whole skill shot area here where it says coin toss. And what, you're, what you'll notice is that there's three LEDs and they correspond to three uh, spots inside of this whole skill shot. And what you're trying to do is land the ball into one of the LEDs that's flashing. Uh, on your first ball, all three LEDs will be flashing. So no matter what you, you do, you're gonna land it in into one of them really. Uh, and then any balls after that, There'll be two of them that are flashing. If you get one of those, then it remains, you know, one one last flashing. So each one of those, when you do that, it's it's definitely worth a lot of points. So once the ball's in play, there's a number of things to do, but I'll just go ahead and mention really at first, you'll probably notice that uh, the soccer ball will start spinning. And when it's spinning, if you can aim up here for this goal and make a goal, that's going to turn on uh, one of the ultra modes. You've got an ultra goalie, uh, ultra ramps, ultra jet, and ultra spinner. The ultra gully, when you hit it in the gully, that's you know, that's the objective there. Uh, the ramps, of course, they'll be lighting up here. It says ultra ramps. That's where you're aiming for both the ramp here and the one over here. Uh, the ultra jets, when you get the ball up there in that ultra jets, that the ultra jets that's blinking right now, it gives you a bunch of rewards. 
And then the spinner, which is over here where the soccer ball is, that's where you're aiming for that. Just in front of the soccer ball over on the right is a, a scoop. It says a TV award and you've also got the final draw. So the TV award, when you aim for that, oh, and I forgot to mention earlier when I was talking about LEDs, that was something that I did uh, do another little upgrade. So whenever the TV award is lit, I've actually got a light that's down inside that's tied to it that lights up with it. And the same thing for final draw. When it's lit, there's a light inside that lights up. So it just really gets your attention a little bit more. And I, and I changed colors. I put blue in here and a blue lamp down inside. You can kind of see it as it's cycling through right now. First time you do the TV award, uh, it'll actually have something called the big goal around. And you're, you've got 20 seconds to try to shoot three balls into this goal. Uh, it's pretty doable. Uh, it's not too terribly hard and it's, you know, it's worth getting uh, some points, some major points. Uh, next time you hit the, the uh, TV award, you're going to get uh, the extra ball, which if you can shoot the ball into uh, the, the scoop that's over here, you can get an extra ball. The third time that you hit the TV award, now you're actually aiming for the goalie himself. So he's going to be bouncing back and forth and you're trying to actually hit him. So that's the objective of, of the third time. And then the fourth time is called the striker award. And there are targets that are located here, here, and here. And each time you build, each time you hit that, it's building a letter to spell striker for the, uh, for the award associated with that. Of course, we've got to talk about multi-ball. So how do you get multi-ball? Well, one way that you need to, what you have to do to get the locks enabled is you actually have to build the lock. And you'll see uh, right up here, it says build lock. There's one there. Uh, there is one up here. And every time that you actually enter the ramp, you'll see it says, says build lock there. Um, and there's one here. Every time that you go around that, you're, you're building the lock. Now, what do you mean by building lock? You may be thinking, well, right here, complete to light lock. Every time that you build lock, it's going to increase by you know, strength, stamina, skill, spirit, and speed. When you have those all lit, both the locks, uh, either on this ramp uh, or this ramp, will be lit. When you lock the first ball, either direction, whether you're shooting it around the right or the left, it's going to come down and it is going to be captured right here. There is a, an electromagnet underneath that spot and it will grab the ball then it drops it and parks it right down into this area. Uh, when you go to, to attempt to lock the second ball, you can shoot it in, in either one of those again. The third time to really start the actual multi-ball, if you shoot it into this final draw, that will be light, lit up at that point. When you shoot in there, that's when the multi-ball goes crazy. Okay, so one of the major objectives of the game that I haven't even mentioned yet is to actually travel through all the cities and get ultimately to Los Angeles where you can actually watch the World Cup final, or not watch it, you're going there for to, to compete against Germany and to try to be the actual World Cup champion. So how do you do that? Well, you gotta do two basic things uh, to get through each city. And you gotta buy a ticket and then you gotta travel to the city. So you're gonna start out trying to get to Chicago and then Dallas and then so forth. Now, how do you buy a ticket? Well, you can buy a ticket a couple different ways. One is you can actually go through up here at this ramp where it has buy a ticket. If you go through that ramp when that light's blinking and then also come through and then go through this ramp while, while, it's, while the buy ticket is blinking, uh, that will actually start um, blinking the light, meaning that you've bought the ticket for uh, the, the next city that's available. Another way to do it is up here at the very top, there's this two lanes that you actually can see them closely. They say buy a ticket right now. If you Every time that you cross over those lanes, uh, that will buy another ticket. And this game does have lane change. So if you've got a ball that's about to drop down a lane that's already lit and the one next to it isn't, you can hit one of the flippers and it will flip the lit and the unlit lanes uh, over so that you can make good use of that. Now, after you actually buy a ticket, you need to travel there. Now, the way to travel there is right here. It says travel. So on that left uh, left side, right where the spinner is and the soccer ball, whenever you travel there, then you will actually travel to uh, to the next uh, city that was blinking. And you could have multiple cities that are all blinking that you've bought multiple tickets for. Uh, and every time that you uh, go through that travel, you'll travel through another, you know, up to the next city. 
ultimately you're trying to get to uh, Los Angeles to, to be able to play Germany for the actual World Cup Challenge. Once you've made it there to Los Angeles, the final draw light will be blinking again like it is right now. If you can shoot it into that scoop, that's what starts the whole major thing at the end. And your, your main objective is to try to shoot as many goals as you can in a 45 second period. It is a five ball multi-ball. There are five ball, balls in this game. Of course, you know, it just has the auto ball launcher. It doesn't have um, anything that, or it does not have an auto ball launcher, it's manual. Uh, so what will happen is that it will kick out uh, the additional two balls uh, in addition to the one that you already had in play so that you actually have three that are in play. But then there'll be another ball that's queued up here where um, you can launch it. That will get you to four balls. And then there'll be another one that's uh, ready to go. You shoot that. Now you'll have five balls in play. Uh, during that period of time, if you drain any of the balls, it will continue to keep uh, getting a ball ready over in the launcher to where you can continue to keep as many as up to five balls in play. And it's honestly, it's pretty chaotic. You're having to work pretty good, uh, but you're trying to shoot as many goals as you possibly can. During that 45 uh, second time, what will happen is up on the scoreboard, it will, it will show you how many goals that you have versus Germany. And the objective of, to win the game is just to, to have more goals uh, than Germany at, at the end of that. And that's basically it. There's other parts of this game, other little features, other details uh, that I won't go into, but I just wanted to kind of give an overview. And I'm just gonna give a quick demo of playing the game. Oh yeah, one last thing I forgot to mention. This game does have a ball save over on the left that whenever these are lit up over here, it will, uh, it will save the ball for you. And you do have a Magna save. There's a second button that's over here on the left uh, that if you can get used to it, I always struggle getting used to it, but if you can get used to it, you can catch the ball here. And I found that if you hold that flipper up, it helps to kind of calm it all down so that when it releases it, it doesn't just throw it right down the drain. Anyways, let's get started.
If you do have another credit, especially if you got a really good game going, hit this ball here. Hit this button for an extra ball. I'll tell you what, if you got a good game going, it's worth it. Let's see if I can get that. Kickback. Okay, let's see if I can make it in. Oh, not quite. set to where you could actually buy an extra ball up to three times uh but i'm gonna go ahead and just stop it there and yeah it's especially noisy right now because i got the glass off but anyways that's about it great game oh look at that you got a match got a free game out of it anyways that's it hope you guys enjoy it leave comments below Appreciate you watching. Thanks.